Hi, Mike's Carburetor Parts here. Um, I'm going to talk about the Rochester two barrel, two jet carburetor and flooding and or running rich. Now my head uh, running rich and flooding are pretty much can be caused by the same things. Uh, running rich basically you got black smoke coming out of the tailpipe. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you know it's probably running rough at idle and uh, it, you get this gassy smell under the hood and flooding basically means you are flooding you're getting so much gas that it's pouring out over the top through the vent pipe here possibly uh, any anywhere it can go a lot of times it'll run down the throat and right out the throttle shaft uh, right out here uh, people think that's a shaft leaking, but there ain't no such thing. Uh, um, there's no seals or anything in the shaft. It's just a, somewhere for the gas to run out. So, um, and while I'm taking this top off, uh, one thing you want to think about is your fuel pump. If you have replaced your fuel pump with a new one, they are highly suspect. The new fuel pumps, uh, they just they just aren't made that well anymore, and they uh, tend to put out way too much pressure. I've seen some put out 20 pounds uh, when your carburetor needs about four and a half, maybe five. I'm not sure what this two jet is, depends on your uh, vehicle, but uh, and check your motor's manual. Most motor manuals tell you what it's supposed to be. Uh, but I'm guessing around uh, probably not much more than five pounds of pressure. So there are fuel pump pressure testers out there. Uh, be sure you get one for carburation um, so that it'll test, you know, under 10 pounds. Where if you get fuel injection, it'll want to test, test it at like 100 pounds. So you got to be sure you got the right one. Uh, so probably the number one cause, and I'll get to that here and get this off. Just want to get off so I can show you the inside. Uh, Flooding is probably the number one uh, question we get asked on our website. And by the way, our website is mikescarb.com. Uh, you want to go there to get your parts. Uh, if you uh, uh, buy your parts from us, it helps us uh, afford to make these videos, which uh, hopefully uh, will help you out when you need some troubleshooting help. Uh, probably the number one cause of flooding is a needle and seat. Uh, it could be dirty, uh, lots of things that could happen to it, but if the needle and seat isn't sealing, then the gas is going to go through the inlet and right through the needle and seat and never stop. The whole purpose of the float and the needle and seat is to regulate the, uh, the fuel that's coming in. So, and I got this upside down, but as it drops down, this one it doesn't drop down enough. It should be adjusted probably. As it, when it drops down, uh, it it opens up the needle and lets fuel flow through. And then when it, as fuel fills up the bowl, and the float will close the needle in the seat. Now if there's dirt in it, then uh, it's not going to seal it, and you're going to get a leak. So one way to do it is to, to blow air through here and sometimes I just do it with my mouth and uh, move your float up and down and uh, when it's uh, up like that it should seal it off uh, and, and while I'm thinking about it, be careful when you're adjusting your float never adjust it uh, with it sitting on the needle here because you start bending things around you're going to put pressure on the biting tip and cause it to leak. This one has a little clip on the end of it, which a lot of these two jets will, and just simply clips, uh, uh, you put it through this hole, you put it most anywhere, as long as your float is pulling it straight up and down. So what that's for is so when the float drops, remember this is upside down, it will pull that needle out and to keep it from sticking a lot of times they'll put this attachment on it and uh, it helps pull it out and by the way uh, 
we we don't sell too many of these nitrofill anymore we try to use brass uh, we found some of the nitrofills being made nowadays aren't holding up to ethanol so check your needle and see now if the car has been sitting around a long time uh, chances are the inside of the carburetor is going to be coated with uh, um, bad gas and it'll smell like varnish you can usually smell it and you get get the top off and you know you got a problem that's when you're gonna have to clean the carburetor really well to get that varnish out of it it'll get in here in the needle and seat uh, there has a vitin tip on it and like say putting pressure on it it's easy to damage that vitin tip and it will leak um, but back to uh, testing it uh, you blow through here and with the float closed uh, you should get little to no pressure through there now if you blow hard enough obviously it's going to open up that needle uh, you're looking about four and a half five five pounds what you're looking for okay some people use a vacuum gauge and eh, i don't think that's all that great um, but if there's something wrong with that needle you're going to tell it's going to go right through it and that'll be the number one cause and that will be due to dirt varnished um, maybe just as effective needle and seat hard to say depends on uh, what the history is of your carburetor uh, let's see what are some other causes uh, get past that of course the float uh, check your float now this is a nitrofill it's actually solid uh, the only way you can test this is to weigh it um, and we usually have the specs for the float weight on nitrofills on our website uh, if it's brass and you heat up some water, well, first of all, shake it, see if there's any gas in it. Um, if if it's leaking, you'll hear the gas sloshing around. Now, it's been sitting for years. That gas has probably evaporated out. So you can heat up some water just prior to boiling. Immerse your float in it, your brass float, and look for any bubbles. And what happens is the heat will expand the float. And um, if there's any holes in it somewhere, you'll see bubbles coming out of it. And, and then that'll be your problem right there. Um, another thing is your uh, power valve. This is a power piston. Now if that thing is stuck, now what happens at, at full, uh, at idle, when you don't need the power, the vacuum pulls this up. And then as you go along, as you uh, accelerate, the vacuum lessens and that makes this thing go down and pushes on your uh, power valve right here on this little needle make sure that needle is straight up and down there's no seal in it other than underneath uh, when you when you uh, put it in here when you install it uh, but that needle it's all brass in there it just needs to be clean that needle has to be straight up and down now if this is frozen which a lot of them are if it doesn't co go up and down real good uh, that power valve may be open all the time and so that's going to inject too much fuel in there so that'll make it run rich may not make the gas flow over the top but it will run rich um, another thing to check on the richness anyway is uh, looking down your carburetor at idle or you've been running you turn it off look down here and you should not see gas dribbling through out of the venturis here any of these holes okay uh, if you do then you got a problem with the main discharge and that is located underneath the venturi here and what that means is the uh, intake part or excuse me the the exhaust part now this is for the accelerator pump circuit that's how the, this gas is but you don't want gas uh, coming out during uh, uh, when it's idling Okay, so if the check ball in here is not sealing, you're going to have gas dribbling out. And that's going to make it run rich. All right, so first of all, make sure your gasket. Sometimes new gaskets that need to be trimmed a little bit to fit better. Make sure that it's sitting flat. If it's not, it's going to leak there. And right in here is your uh, check ball. Take your T out like a so. It's staked over. When you stake these, just stake it lightly because it, it doesn't take much to hold them in. Don't beat the heck out of it where you got to replace your carburetor. Okay, so there's the spring. And you got your check ball here. Now on a two-jet, you get 
you know, on our kits, if you get two check belts, put the larger one in here in the main discharge. And so what it does is your accelerator pump, when it goes down, it forces gas out through this main discharge and through the uh, Venturi here. And if this is leaking, then at idle, it's going to suck gas out of here when you don't want it to. Okay. And the way to make that seal is now these are stainless steel, so not much can happen to them. Uh, you put it in there and you take a little drift punch in there and, and tap it lightly. And that's just to form the trough down there so the check ball will fit better. And then make sure you got the spring in here. And that's just one of those odd things that can happen uh, when you're talking about flooding or uh, just too much gas is uh, maybe it's dribbling out like here and that would make it run rich especially at idle. Okay see that's I don't even need to stake that over that's going to stay there because keep in mind this is going to keep it from popping out so with the gasket and everything uh, so there you go and incidentally this one does not use uh, emulsifying tubes uh, it could be a marine uh, not all carburetors use those tubes so don't worry about it if they're not there and what the emulsifying tubes do they emulsify okay the, the gas mix in the air and the, and the gas so um so again, back to the float, you just want to make sure it's not bent sideways or something where it's rubbing. Uh, so look for things uh, for a reason for too much gas to get into the carburetor because that's all about what richness is. Uh, you're, uh, there's two things people want to do right away if you're running too rich. They want to change the jets and they want to adjust the float. All right. Well, of course, the float, if it's not adjusted right, it, it could be running too rich. Probably won't make it flood unless it's way out of whack all right jets don't typically wear out don't change your jets now if you got this carburetor swap meet or something uh, you don't know what's in it then you might have to think about the jet jet size are generally stamped on the on the jet um, if if it's not stamped then you're gonna have to go to our website we got uh, charts on a lot of the carburetor numbers you're gonna need a carburetor number to get the jet size uh, the OE jet size we don't have them all uh, but if it happens to be there you know what they are otherwise you're gonna have to measure the hole now we use uh, we got these little rods I don't have them in front of me uh, little rods that they're go no go things you stick in there and they're like micrometers and one of them will be like uh, a 0 0.50 which is 50 thousandths and and if it goes in if it's just fine then you got a 50 thousandth jet okay but these are stamped I can see it from here on the top of the jet um, and that'll tell you this so if it says 50 on the jet that means they're 50 thousandths 0 0.50 all right so right off hand that's about all I can think of that would make a carburetor flood uh, but you take care of those problems or you know take check out those things you're probably going to get find the problem right but you got to do this stuff you got to uh, you know people take off you talk about their uh, fuel pump uh, pressure being too high and you know they take the the inlet fuel line off and see if gas is pumping out and looks okay to them well that's not how you test it you got to have a fuel pump tester uh, otherwise it's just just one big guess so there you go. I hope this helps with your richness or flooding problem on your 2-Jet. Thank you for watching. Okay, so your carburetor is running rich and uh, you are thinking about the jets. And uh, just a quick video here on how to uh, find jets. Uh, first of all, if you go to the technical, this uh, link right up here says technical. And we're talking about 2-Jets here and you want to do uh, jet sizes right here is your jet sizes and we'll find uh, two jet right here Rochester two barrel and here's the jet size now we don't have a hundred percent you're going to need your carburetor number otherwise it's a big guess it's the only way uh, there's your carburetor numbers there's jet size it should be uh, there's two jets in, in the in the two jet carburetor hence the name uh, and they'll be the same size so you can look it up there uh, now uh, your uh, 
if you need to buy jets, uh, then we'll go over here to, uh, let's see, right here it says buy jets. It's, you can just click on that. And here's your 120-10 uh, is a number. And just pick out the size you need here. Uh, as I mentioned before, the size will be stamped on the jet. Uh, if not, you're going to have to measure it somehow. Uh, there you go. And that's how you find your jets.